The first and most basic technique when you start with Nmap is to learn how to list open ports and scan remote hosts. It is very important to know that this is the basis of every other type of Nmap scanning. In short, this technique is used to identify live services on a host behind the ports on a network. The most general and widely used term for this type of scanning is port scanning. You should run Linux operating system. Most preferably, you should run Kali Linux because it's the easiest to work with when you conduct these types of activities and scans. The first thing that you are going to do is open a terminal, then drag it to a right or left side, then zoom in a little bit in order to increase visibility. Before running a Nmap scan against a specific host, we should run a ping scan. Type inside a terminal ping against scanme.nmap.org. And if we see in the output that we are getting ICMP reply, that means that host is alive. Basically the ping scan is used to test the ability of the source computer to reach a specified destination computer. We can run a ping scan against anything that has a host name. For example, google.com. It is very good practice to run a ping scans before running nmap scans in order to see if the host is reachable. So we don't waste our time scanning a host that we cannot reach on a network. More technically, we are sending uh, the ICMP who requests and waiting for a response. Also, we can see timing of those responses in the output of the ping command. Very useful feature of ping scanning is that we can determine IP address behind a hostname. Now we are going to conduct our first nmap scan. We are going to do it against scanme.nmap.org, which is specifically tailored by nmap in order for us to test nmap scripts and nmap scanning techniques. Inside your terminal, just type in nmap scanme.nmap.org. Just press enter in order to execute the scan and wait for a scan to finish. In order to add verbosity or to see what the nmap is doing in the background, we just need to add dash v to the command that we just executed. This way the nmap is generating a live dump of everything that is doing in the background. Also it's very useful to use dash v or verbosity in order to more quickly get to the needed results when we are conducting penetration tests or any other security assessments. As it is obvious, we can see the discover ports and other information before the scan was even finished. And we got the output, nmap scan is finished. So on the left side of our right terminal window, we can see the port numbers and the protocols, whether it's TCP or UDP. Then in the middle we have the state, the ports can be opened, filtered or closed, more about that later. And we have service or so-called service banner, which, uh, where we can identify the type or the name of service. Here we have SSH, SMTP, HTTP, and ping echo, and something called elite, which I'm not really sure what it is. Even when we are conducting the most basic Nmap scans, Nmap is doing a lot in the background. If we input a hostname when conducting Nmap scan, the Nmap is using DNS in order to convert the hostname to the raw IP address that is later going to use in the scanning process. DNS is domain name system and it is used for computers to identify each other on the network. In short, it's used for translating host names into internet protocol or IP addresses, which are used by computers in order to communicate with each other. In order to change the DNS service that the nmap is using, you are going to run a following command, nmap dash dash DNS dash servers, and we are going to use Cloudflare 1, which is 1111 against scanme.nmap.org. Then we just wait for the scan to finish. While the first scan is running in the left terminal window, in the right one I'm going to demonstrate how to run a custom nmap DNS scan, which includes two DNS addresses. 
So we just run nmap dash dash dns dash servers, use Cloudflare one, which is one 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 one, then add comma, blank space, and we can use another one which is four 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 four. This way we are using multiple domain name systems in order to conduct our nmap scans. In the other terminal window, I'm going to skip the reverse DNS resolution by using dash lowercase n. And on the contrary, you can force reverse DNS resolution by using dash uppercase r. In order to do this, just type in nmap dash n against scanme.nmap.org. As you can see, we are getting identical results, but the goal of this exercise is that we are changing the inner workings of nmap. Another very important feature of nmap is that we can specify a port range when conducting nmap scan. So just type inside your terminal nmap-p1-30, which means that we are scanning all ports from number 1 to 30. And again, we are going to use scanme.nmap.org. And very quickly we can see the nmap output. Another type of port specification when scanning with nmap is that we can select specific ports or multiple specific ports when conducting a scan. For example, we can use nmap-p4444 against scanme.nmap.org. This means that we are going to only scan the port 4444. And as you can expect, nmap gives us the output of only one port. The same type of scan we can do against port 81. And then again, we can repeat the same scan against port 443. Even you can add the verbosity at the end of nmap script. And of course, any of these port scanning combinations we can combine with a specific DNS server command in this case, we are going to use 1111, which is Cloudflare's DNS service. By doing all of this, we covered the most basic concepts of nmap scanning. I would encourage you to do a lot of scanning in your local area network at home and to do a lot of scanning against addresses on the internet.